Hi there, welcome to the Schwoven's Nest. My name is Sandra. Here on my channel, I love farmhouse decor and I really love making something out of nothing. If that sounds like fun to you, I would love it if you could stick around and keep watching. What? This project is probably my favorite out of all of them that I'm doing today. I'm starting off with a piece of linen, sort of like drop cloth fabric, and I've cut out a piece of cardstock in the same shape. I'm going to be making a cone, but this shape is a little too rounded at one end. It should have had a little bit more angles to it. So I'm gonna end up having to trim some of it. So gluing the edges in like I'm doing now is kind of not worth it in this part right here, but it will be fine for the rest of it. I just wanted to have a nice clean edge and because I'm gonna have to cut some of this, I'll show you what I'm gonna do to fix it. So I'm trying to make a cone shape out of this and it was a bit of a struggle. I should have folded the one little piece over the one edge so I would have a crease and it would have been much easier to work with. But I'm just going to do my best and hot glue both of these edges together and make sure they're secure. It's going to take a little bit of time because the hot glue was a little too hot and it just really didn't hold very well. So I had to hold it down quite a long time until it was set. I know it's a little early in the video, but if you don't mind, I'd love it if you could hit that like button, especially if you do like my video. Two things, it lets me know that you like the kind of content that I'm putting out. And the second thing is it lets YouTube know that you like what I'm putting out and they promote me more, which helps my channel grow. I'm a little off camera here, I do apologize for that, but this is where I decided to cut the cone so it would be more straight all along the top. I was a little long in my template, so I'm just going to even it out. Now that I've got some raw edges all the way along the top again, I'm just going to cut out another couple of pieces of the linen fabric. I'm going to glue them on the inside and then fold them over to kind of create a little hem hanging over the top of the cone. Because the cone is round and my fabric is a straight line, I did have to kind of gather it just a little bit and kind of turn it and make sure that it was following the edge of the cone. Once I'm done with this portion, I will glue the other side down and this will create a pretty little hem. Then I'm gonna have to add another piece for the back part of the cone. So I decided that I wanted to add a stencil to the front side of the cone. And if I would have been a little smarter or thinking outside the box or ahead of myself, I would have done this on the fabric while it was still flat. So I would recommend doing that first because this was a little tricky. I had to hang on to the stencil and try not to squish the cone at the same time while I added the paint to it. I'm just going to be using some black multi-surface paint that is from folk art so it's good for any type of material but I like to use this when I'm doing fabric. I'm just using a small chip brush so I can get into all the little details of the stencil and you don't want to load your brush too much because then you'll just get big blobs everywhere. So I did have to readjust the stencil because every once in a while my hand that was holding it slipped and then I had to kind of realign it but I think it turned out pretty nice anyway. I'm going to start filling the cone with pieces of pool noodle. Thank goodness it's summertime up here in Canada because we finally got some pool noodles at our dollar stores. They're so much better to use and so much more inexpensive to use than the floral foam. I'm just going to cut down all sorts of bits and pieces and then glue them into the cone, making sure that it's nice and sturdy and it's not going to be too squishy. I'm going to be adding a whole bunch of different florals in here. 
I'm going to start by adding some Spanish moss. This is from the Dollar Tree and I'm just going to pull it apart and arrange it so it covers all of the green. I'm not going to bother hot gluing it down or pinning it in because as I put my florals in that's going to keep it in place. For this arrangement, I'm using some lavender that I gave a light dusting of white spray paint to because they were a little dark in color. I'm using some of these beautiful Sola Wood flowers and if you're interested in trying those out, I do have a link for them down in my description box. And I'm also going to be using a little bit of lamb's ear. So with the Sola Wood flowers, I added some bamboo skewers and I just push those into the bottom of the florals just very carefully. Some are a little shorter than others because I wanted some to be at the bottom and then some to be standing up towards the back. I'm using the lavender as my filler florals and I'm just going to keep adding it in until I like the look of it. I want there to be quite a bit of lavender in between all of the solo wood flowers. I added the lamb's ear around the perimeter of the cone just so you could see it a little bit, drooping a couple of them down and adding a few little mini solo wood flowers. And I think this turned out beautiful. Today's video is in collaboration with my new YouTube friend, Amy from Create with Amy 507. Amy has a real talent for farmhouse decor, and these are just some of the items that you'll see when you visit her channel. My favorite is this beautiful mailbox with that sweet little mouse. How adorable. I would really appreciate if you could give Amy the same support you've shown me. Go over to her channel, click on her video, hit that red subscribe button, hit the like button and the notification bell and help her channel grow. My second project is using these thrifted plates. They were actually from Pottery Barn and I got them for $6, six for $6, so a dollar each. I'm going to give them a quite a few coats of some white chalk paint because it took a little bit to cover that and to get a nice smooth surface. But just the top, I'm going to leave the sides and the bottom as is. To make a bit of a frame and make sure that the white really pops, I'm just taking some of that black multi-surface paint and a flat paintbrush, and I'm gonna go all the way around the edge of these plates. I want them to have sort of a framed out look, and I thought the black would be perfect because the wood underneath is a really super dark brown. It almost looks black too. If you've been watching my channel and following me for a while, you know that one of my favorite ways to transfer images is using tissue paper. It is so inexpensive. You can get a pack of at least 20 or 25 sheets of tissue paper from the dollar store, whether it's Dollarama, Dollar Tree, Dollar General, Walmart, wherever. It's going to be really inexpensive. You just take that tissue paper and you tape it onto a regular piece of photocopy paper paper and put it through your printer. Now I use a laser jet printer and it works really well. I have had some people comment that the tissue paper gets eaten up. I would just recommend taping all the way around the tissue paper. Don't leave anything out and make sure that your tissue paper is a little bit smaller than the copy paper itself. If you're looking for a full tutorial on how to print on tissue paper, I've got that in my description box too, along with the link to my website where I'll have all of these free printables available for you. I always use Mod Podge when I'm working with tissue paper, unless I'm working with a full sheet, then I usually use a glue stick. But you put a small amount of Mod Podge on your project and then lay the tissue paper on top and then making sure your brush is always damp with Mod Podge, go ahead and just go all over the top of it. I'm gonna do the same with the label that I created at the bottom. 
I decided to do a little bit of distressing, so I'm taking that same little chip brush, doing a dry brushing technique, and I'm just kind of going around the rim of the plate for now, and then I'm going to go over the outside edges. I'm not going to go over the lemon because sometimes when your paintbrush hits the tissue paper you get that outline showing up and I don't want that to happen. So I'm just going to go very lightly and give it a distressed look. I've never been a big bow person but ever since I figured out how to do the double loop two finger bow. I've been doing it more often because they always turn out perfect. I've already made two in the black and white buffalo check or the gingham style. I've got a black with some white stitching and now I'm going to do this little stripe here. Now that I have all my bows, I'm going to be adding a little bit of hot glue to the top two edges of the circle. And then I'm going to be gluing the actual loops right on top of the plate. And that will just hold it in place and it'll make it look like the plate or the plaque itself is all the way around. For a final touch, I'm going to add one little baby's breath from the Dollar Tree and I'm going to put that blossom right in the center of the bow and then I'm going to add just a little piece of greenery and these are all set to go. I really love how they turned out. If this is the first time you're visiting my channel or you're coming over from Amy's channel, welcome. I'm so glad you're here and I'm so happy that you decided to take some time out of your day to spend it with me. If you haven't already subscribed and you like what you see, I would really appreciate if you could hit that red button too. Last year before Christmas, I had bought a couple of these rugs, one in black, which is this one, and one in gray. They're about $3.50 at my Dollarama store because they're about twice the size of the ones you can get at the Dollar Tree. I didn't end up doing anything with them, so I had a great idea to make a cute little welcome mat for my front door. I went to my Cricut and I cut out the word welcome on some vinyl, and I'm just going to stick it down here and have a really tough time peeling off the transfer tape and I'm not going to take you through that struggle but I finally got it to stick. I'm using some of the white multi-surface paint and I'm just using a stencil brush and I'm pouncing up and down and making sure that I don't have any bleeding underneath my vinyl. It actually worked out really well. I tried using some chalk paint that really didn't cover very well so I ended up going with the multi-surface paint and that seemed to do the trick. I did end up doing two coats though before I was finished. With the two coats, I didn't think it was going to be dark enough, but look at that. It turned out really well, and I'm really pleased with this multi-surface paint on the black. I do have to weed out a couple of areas, but then I'm going to be good to go. Also using my Cricut and some of this plastic poster board, I cut out a square template because I wanted this to kind of have the look of a buffalo check border, but it's not going to be 100% buffalo check. So basically white squares and black squares. And again, I'm just using my stencil and that multi-surface paint, and I'm just going to pounce to my heart's content until I get the border done all the way around. Using the same plastic poster board and my Cricut, I cut out another stencil. This is a couple of lemons with a few leaves. And I'm going to do the leaves in the green. And of course, the lemons are going to be yellow. I've already got a couple that are stenciled on there. They didn't come out as solid as the others, but I'm okay with that. I think it looks kind of nice when it's not 100% solid. It gives it a little bit more texture and a little bit more dimension. Thank you. 
Once I had my lemons done, I just took one of my oil-based paint pens and just drew a rough line connecting all of the white squares. It didn't have to be perfect and I like it when it's not perfect because that's the rustic in me and it was really easy to do. So it looks really good with that extra line as the border. Now it's time to do some freehanding. I'm using a stencil brush, but it's not a round one. It's more of a straight one or a flat one maybe. And what I'm doing is just creating some lavender stems. And this is so easy to do. You just kind of put these little oval shapes and make them a little bit bigger as you're going down, or you can leave them all looking the same. It really isn't rocket science to do something like this. What I would suggest is if you want to do something like this, practice on a little bit of paper first until you get the hang of it and then head on over to your rug and get creative. Using the same green paint that I used for the lemon leaves, I'm going to add some stems and a few little leaves to my lavender sprigs. And I am so pleased with how my rug turned out. This is going to be sitting on my front porch for the summer. I think it's perfect. Project number four is also using a thrifted item. This was a candelabra that I found at the thrift store long time ago, and it's just been waiting for me to do something with it. So I'm just taking some of these pliers or grips or whatever you want to call them, and I'm just taking that center metal piece and bending it back and forth really strongly until it pops off. I'm going to do that for all of them. Then I'm going to take some of these saucers that were also a thrift store find. I think I have eight or ten of them and I think they were like three dollars. What I'm going to use is some of my weld bond glue and some hot glue and I'm going to actually put these right on top of the three spaces for the candelabra. This is going to give me some space where I can put something on or display some candles or put some vases on. It's going to open up a lot more possibilities than just candles. For this first center one, I was able to do it upside down to make sure that it was nice and centered. But then for the other ones, I'm going to have to flip it over. So I let this one set up for a little bit and then I flipped it over and glued the other two on the same way. As a crafter, and if you're a crafter, you know this, you save everything. These are two candle jars that I've had for a while. I keep all of this stuff in a bin down in my basement, and then I just go through it when I need something. I'm going to be gluing on two of these little drawer pulls, and I think these are perfect little cloches for my candelabra. My saucers are pretty much dried and now I'm just taking some of this Rust-Oleum matte clear finish and I'm just spraying a little bit along the top and the sides because this is going to really help my chalk paint stick better. And I know chalk paint sticks to a lot of surfaces but these are really slick. So anything that is ceramic or glass, I always put my sealer coat on first. While I wait for that to dry, I'm going to give this terracotta pot a coat or two of chiffon cream chalk paint. That's the chalk paint that I'm going to use for the saucers as well because it's the closest color that I could get to to match the bottom of the candle. So just a couple of coats of this will work just fine. Now that the saucers are dry, I'm going to give them the same color and it's not chiffon cream because that's a Rust-Oleum color. This is a folk art home decor chalk paint and this is called sheepskin. I'm going to try and duplicate sort of the rough texture of the candelabra itself. So I'm just taking the side of my paintbrush here and putting on just a little bit of black paint. I'm going to go around the top, around the edges, and then around the bottom rim as well. I know this doesn't match perfectly, but I think the colors complement each other nicely. The other thought I had was to paint these saucers black. 
and then leave the candelabra the beige color that it is. Let me know if you think that would look better because I toyed with that idea, but then I thought it might be a little too harsh with it being all black. But I'd love to know your opinion on that. I added some lavender into that little terracotta pot and that will be the center attraction of this piece. I hope you enjoyed my projects today and got some inspiration to create some summer farmhouse decor for your home. Please make sure you give me a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button and click the notification bell because I've got lots more in store for you in the future. Bye for now. Bye.